What's going on everybody, Jesse here. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can build a Slack bot. So in the Slack bot we have today, we're going to query Slack uh, and pass a product number. Uh, that product is gonna be looked up in our database and a bunch of information is gonna be passed back to Slack. So just an example of what we're gonna build, the tool is you can type in hashtag inventory and then a SKU number of your choice you press enter and then this triggers our Wayscript program to run which is going to look up this SKU number in our database and then return the results back to us so as you can see it passes back to me the price for that SKU number it's expensive and uh, how many we have remaining left uh, so this is just a really simple example uh, we want to show off some of the features around Slack and SQL and how you can mix these things together so I'm going to teach you from scratch how we build this tool. All right, so what I'm going to do is just clear everything out and start over. Awesome. So now we are in our blank Wayscript canvas, and we want to do this step by step. So the first step is we want to receive information when uh, one of our Slack users posts a message on Slack for us to get. So we're going to do this through the trigger functionality. So you're going to grab the Slack trigger. Uh, we'll turn it on so it's ready to go. Uh, it has our channel. And when a message is posted to a channel, uh, in this case, I'll just choose everyone. But you could also have it working for any channel if you want. And what we're going to get out of it is the message text. There's other data we can pull. Uh, so while we're working with this, I'm just going to set a default value so we can work with that on other pieces. So this is like an example. So now you can see the Slack message test is assigned to this, but when the program runs, it'll be replaced with whatever the content of the message was. Awesome. So now we have our message text. And what we want to say is if hashtag inventory is in the, in the message, then we want to go look up this information. So we're going to use a condition to make that happen. So we'll say if the Slack message text contains hashtag inventory colon, then we're going to execute one set of instructions. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. So what we first want to do now is, OK, so the message has been passed and it's correct. It has hashtag inventory, we now want to pull that SKU number out of the message text. So we're going to use our text actions to do that. So I drag in text actions. You can also use this if you know some coding, you can do it with Python or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace text. So we're going to say the text we want to replace is the Slack message text. We are looking for hashtag inventory colon and we're going to replace it with just blank so we're going to leave that blank and we'll replace text within words so if it's like within the contents of a word that will still work and our replacement text will be our SKU number so we'll just label that as a SKU number and as you now can see our SKU number is just that 001 all right so the next thing we want to do is actually query our database for information stored on that item. So I'm going to go and grab SQL and drag it in. So now we're in SQL and we can select a database. So it's really easy to add your own database, but I already have one pre-programmed. Um, I only want the first matching row, so I only want one result. I don't want many results, so I'm just going to select that option. And then I'm going to select all from SKUs, which is the name of my SKU of my table, where SKU equals. And we will stick the SKU number in there. So and press play. And you can see that it's returned the result of that SKU. And now we can label our items. So this will be the SKU number. And we already have the SKU number, so I don't need that. Let's just grab the price and the number remaining. Obviously, you could pull other information, but now those pieces of data are available in our program. 
So the next thing that we need to do is create the message that we want to send back to Slack. So we're going to create a variable that we call Slack message uh, to return or whatever you want to call it. And we'll say here is the info for our SKU number. And we will let's make this a little bigger so we have a little more space to work with. We'll say the price is dollar symbol and grab the price and stick it in there. And then we'll say number remaining is the number remaining. Cool. So what do we want to do in the else condition? You can either leave it blank. So if it's not formatted with this hashtag, it just doesn't do anything. But just because it's a demo, I'm going to do this. So we'll create the same variable name of Slack message to return. And we'll do improper format. And then we'll show the proper format. So we'll say inventory and then skew. So now we create the same message, but just different information depending on which condition we go through. Awesome, we're almost there. So now we're going to go and drag slack after this condition. So in either of these two states, our message has been crafted and then we want to exit that condition and create a message. So on our everyone channel, we're going to write to the channel and we will put our Slack message to return and we will call this our inventory bot. And that's it. So now we have our program and it's good to go. The trigger is active so we can go into Slack and run this. So as an example, we can do, let's do one that works and press enter and our program will run and return the results to us. Awesome. So our results have come in. And just to show the example, if I do something that doesn't fit the format we have requested, we get the other message response back. And there we go. So now we have the improper format returned and it gives us the information for the correct format. So yeah, that's it. It's really simple to set up and this is obviously a basic example, but you can build more complex workflows and conditions and logic for really building interactive tools, which we will follow up with future videos on. I hope you like the content. Please subscribe if you want to see more, ask questions, leave comments, and thanks for watching. Bye.